Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I played for you an etude from the Lefebvre 60 exercises for clarinet. You may notice this is a bass clarinet, not a clarinet. This particular exercise I chose because I wanted to work on getting a nice, even beautiful sound going over the break and I also wanted the opportunity to practice going up over the altissimo break to practice the fingerings for high C sharp and high D. So it's a very beautiful one and I really enjoy playing it. And that's the number one reason why I choose things to practice is because they're fun and they're pretty, right? So um, I'm gonna take you through a few tips on this one. Before we get into that, I wanna thank my patrons and channel members for supporting my channel. It really truly means a lot. If you are not already a supporter and you like what I'm doing and you like that I'm putting content out there every week, please consider supporting my channel either right here on YouTube or over on Patreon. I have different perks for different levels, so you'll have to go and read it and check it out for yourself. Okay, so this particular etude. The first thing that I'm going to say, and I think I say this in almost every video, is to make sure that you are taking a nice, deep, calm breath. This is especially important for a big boy like this, so our air has to get all the way out. Oops, wait, did I just... Our air has to get all the way out through the entire length of the instrument, through the bell, and that's a lot of wind, okay? And so I like to think of saying the word home in reverse <sighs> to really feel the expansion of my lungs all the way down into the core. Now, whenever you start blowing and you're playing bass clarinet, make sure that you are still supporting low. If you're used to playing soprano clarinet like I am and you switch over to bass, you really have to change your thinking to think everything a full octave lower, relax, use a nice warm flow of air rather than a fast cold flow of air as well, okay? So um, those are the two tips for breathing and for blowing. Now, when you're going up over the break, it may take a little bit of practice just learning how the different notes respond, right? So if you're one of those players who just uses a ton of air, you're gonna find in the very first measure, that A, that A is gonna be really, really flat if you're overblowing it and it's gonna sound kind of nasty. So you have to spend a little bit of time practicing slowly so you get a feel for how the instrument feels and how it responds back to you. So I would say shave a little bit of that force of wind off that you're used to using on soprano clarinet, take a little bit of that off, slow down the air, and you'll get a nice, warm, relaxed, beautiful sound and you'll start to hear more of those beautiful colors on the bass clarinet that are so so rich and lovely okay next thing we're gonna go down to where we start getting into the altissimo break um same thing kind of here i'm gonna show you a couple of different fingerings uh, that you could use it's totally up to you what you prefer so you could use a more traditional fingering and for C sharp and for D. So that means for C sharp, you cover half of the hole here, you have your two fingers and then two fingers down here, okay? So this is really important having the finger down here. It allows the C sharp to vent and of course press your register key. So that high C sharp, And I like that fingering because I can really put a lot of wind at that fingering and it won't sound too uh, bright. Um, and the same thing goes for the high D. You can do a more traditional fingering. So same thing, kind of like this. You may or may not want to have this down. It kind of depends on your instrument and how you play. So, that is one option for those two notes. The other option is easier for me to get to a lot of the times, and um, I can actually just kind of like 
blow this fingering this note out without it becoming too like bright and pokey um, if I'm if I'm a little more gentle with the air so uh, for high uh, D I'll show you that first you press just the top register key and just the middle finger of the left hand now comparing that to a more traditional fingering So, both have a very different sound. You can choose whichever one you like. Um, the other fingering for high C sharp, very similar to that of the alternate for high D. Very top button here, and the first finger right here. Comparing that to the traditional fingering, So the traditional fingering is a little bit sharper than this, um, I guess, cheat fingering. Um, so in this, whenever I played it for you, I used the alternate fingerings. Um, I feel like I was able to get a smoother transition up to those notes than I would if I used a traditional fingering. <laughs> And it makes a really nice legato. Kind of like that. Um, maybe we'll do one with a high D. So those are my preferred fingerings for those two notes, especially in something like this, when I can get to it. Um, but the other ones work well too for many people. Now, side note, these alternate fingerings don't work on every bass clarinet out there. So if you're one of those people and you're trying it out and it doesn't work for you, I'm really sorry. I don't have many other options uh, aside from the more traditional fingering. So you will just have to experiment to figure out what works the best for your instrument. But this is a great etude to figure that out in. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoy practicing this. And clarinet players, this is great for you as well. So practice this on regular clarinet, practice it on E flat, on contra, on all the clarinets. It's a lot of fun and great for all of us. Have a wonderful weekend, have a good week next week, and as always, happy practicing.